Okay, so in this one, we're going to do another related rates problem. So if you want to see the overview of this, go back to the previous video. But, but in this, we're going to do a different example that's more complicated than the previous problem. So in this example, we have another geometry problem, right? Because these have nice uh, relationships between our variables that, that are, are easy to look up. So this problem, we have a cone-shaped tank of water. Right, so this cone-shaped tank and it's leaking water at a rate, a constant rate of two feet cubed per hour. Right? So I'm going to move this G, two feet cubed per hour, not minutes. Right? It's a slow leak, but this, this tank is leaking. And the dimensions of our tank, right? dimensions of the tank are, you know, we have a base radius is five feet and tank height 14 feet. Okay. And so our, our problem looks like this. Let me grab this uh, picture They're right here. Okay. So our tank looks like this, right? It's an upside down cone. It's leaking out of the bottom. There's some level of water in it that, that kind of makes a separate smaller cone inside of the tank. And the dimensions of the tank are five foot radius at the top and a 14 foot height. And then, you know, the question is, you know, this, this water level is changing. So if we denote the radius, right, of the top of the water, top or surface, of the water in the tank, let's denote that as R of T, right? This is changing over time because the tank is leaking water. So this water level is gonna be going down. As it goes down, this radius is gonna shrink, right? And then we'll say the depth or the height of water in the tank, the water level, let's call that H of T. Right, so that would be this height, which is a function of time because as this tank leaks water, this water level is dropping, right? This height will be lowering. Okay, so the questions that we want to answer here, we have two questions. We want to know what is the, uh, what is the rate of change of the height, right? So how fast is the water level decreasing, right? H of T decreasing when the depth or the height is equal to six feet, right? So at a particular moment in time, when the height of our cone of water is six feet, how fast is that water level changing, right? And then at the same moment in time, right? So when h of t is six feet, right? How fast is the radius changing? Right, so we're looking for two, two different rates, the rate of change of h and the rate of change of r. Right, so this says we're looking for h prime of t. This one says we're looking for r prime of t, okay? And so um, let's try to set up what's going on in this problem. So let's draw this diagram again. We have three variables. Um, let's make this a little smaller. We have the volume, the height, and the radius. Right, it's so the volume of water as a function of time. We have the height of the water as a function of time. And we have the radius of that kind of top level of the water. As a function of time, let me move this one over here. Okay, so these are three variables that we are looking at in the system, right? And these three variables are going to have um, three separate rates. Oops, let's grab these. Let me put these ones up here. Okay, so this one has rate of change b prime of t, right? I took its derivative with respect to time, even though I don't have an explicit 
uh, function of time for v, I can still take the derivative with respect to time and, and you know get a value from here. So this is what's given in the problem. Right? We're given that the rate of change of the volume as a function of time is it's leaking two feet cubed per hour, right? So this rate of change of the volume is minus two feet cubed per hour, right? We're looking for, in part A, we're looking for this derivative, right? H prime of T, right? So this is what we want to find in question A, right? And in question B, we wanna find R prime of T. Right, which is the derivative with respect to time of r, and none of these do we actually have an explicit formula of time for. Right, We don't have d as a function of time. We know it's a function of time because we kind of understand that this process is changing over time, but we don't have an explicit formula for it, the height, or the radius. Right, That's kind of the point of, of what we're trying to figure out here. Right, so this is part b, is to find the rate of change of r. So this is like a double related rates problem. Right. So maybe let's start with relating h and r, right? To, to understand these related rate problems, to go from this value, right, the value of this rate of change, to these two rates of change, we need to relate the variables somehow, and then take the derivatives of those relationships. So let's start with h and r. Well, h and r are related in the following way. If we go look at the, the picture again, okay? I look at this picture here. Here I have kind of a, a side view of the cone or like a, a cross section of it. So the tank is this kind of bigger triangle, right? The tank has radius five and height 14. So as the water level is kind of decreasing through the cone, it's always in a nice cross section. The cross sections of this, of this water cone always have this nice triangular relationship where the RH triangle is always sitting inside this 514 triangle, right? And so these angles are all the same. So by, you know, the law of similar triangles from geometry, we have a relationship here, right? We always know that this ratio of radius to height is always the same, no matter what level we are in this cone, because we're kind of stuck in this triangle, right? So that gives us this relationship that we can write down here, or I'll just rewrite this as R of T equals five over 14 h of t, right? So that's how we can relate those two variables. We know that the height and the radius are related because they sit inside this similar triangle to the 514 cone. So they're related, you know, basically linearly, right? Radius is directly proportional to the height because you kind of know the dimensions of your tank. Okay, and then from here, now let's relate the volume to these two, right? So if we look at the volume of the cone, Maybe let's go back up a sec, right? We're trying to relate the volume of the cone to the radius and the height. Well, the volume of the cone is one third pi r squared h, right? That's just the, the formula for this. But, you know, when we do these related rates problems, it's much easier to work with just a function of one variable. So this is a function of two variables, right? Radius and height. So let's just rewrite this in terms of the height, right? So we know that the radius is 5 over 14h. So if we start with volume is 1 third pi r squared h, we can rewrite this as volume is 1 third pi 5 over 14h squared h, right? Because the radius and the height are related in this way, I can replace the radius in this equation with the height, 5 fourteenths h, okay? So then we have our first relationship that we'll take the derivative of, right? So we have this volume as a function of h. So if I take the derivative of this with respect to time, I will get a relationship between v prime of t and h prime of t, okay? So let's, let's find this right now. Okay, so if I start with my volume equation, right? I have volume as a function of time, is volume as a function of h of t, right, which is 1 third pi 5 over 14 h of t squared h of t, right? This came from 1 third pi r squared h, and then I replaced r with 
this function of h because that's that's where we got it from in the previous relationship between r and h okay so if i plug that in here it makes this nice and simple so now uh, let's just factor this a little bit first so we get one third pi the 5 over 14 squared becomes i did this out earlier this becomes 25 over 196 and then we get h of t cubed right so this is 5 over 14 squared and then h squared times h becomes h cubed okay so then if we take the derivative of this function using the chain rule right so if i apply the chain rule right i get b prime of t which is dv dh times dh dt gives me one third pi 25 over 196 derivative of this respect to h gives me 3 h of t squared and then times h prime of t for this last part here right and so now let's rewrite this again v prime of t is equal to 25 pi over 196 these threes cancel times h of t squared times h prime of t okay and now i have an equation that relates my rates all right so now we're going to plug in our givens and solve for h prime so we plug in the given information for the givens and solve for h prime of t right so if we go back up we can check that v prime of t was given as minus two feet cubed per hour h of t was given in the word problem and i didn't write it down anywhere but it was given right here right so really this was given as h equals six feet at the moment in time that we're asking about right so h is six feet at the moment in time where we're trying to figure out what the rate of change is so we go here and we plug those in so we plug in minus two feet cubed power is equal to 25 pi over 196 times 6 feet squared times h prime of t right and now we solve this equation for h prime right so we do h prime of t is equal to minus 2 times 196 feet cubed power divided by 25 times pi times 36 feet squared right that's six feet squared right and then if i compute this on a calculator and i did this earlier so i just copy down this number we get negative 0 0.1386 as my number my units are feet cubed per hour divided by feet cubed gives me feet per hour right and that makes sense because the height of the tank would be measured in feet not feet squared or feet cubed right it's just a distance so that's just feet to the one and then per time because it's a derivative and it's then feet per hour makes sense so this is our answer for part a okay the rate of change of height when the height of the tank is six feet right when the height of the tank is six feet we know that the rate of change is negative 0 0.1386 feet per hour this is a point okay so now let's move back to the second question second question said when the height of the tank is six feet how fast sorry the height of the water level is six feet how fast is the radius at the top of the water level changing all right so we're looking for r prime at the same moment in time so if we look at our diagram well we're almost there right we have a relationship between r and h it's given by r of t equals 5 over 14 h so if we differentiate this with respect to time let me just remove this for a second we differentiate this relationship with respect to time we get a relationship between the derivative of h with respect to time and the derivative of r with respect to time okay and that's where we'll be able to solve this problem so if we do this this is part b all right we have the rate of or the radius of the water level is equal to 5 over 14 times the height the water level so if i differentiate this with respect to time i right, apply the chain rule i get r prime of t 
is equal to derivative of this with respect to h. Well, it's a linear function, so I just get the slope, 5, 14. And then the derivative of h with respect to time gives me h prime of t. Okay? And then this is our equation that relates the two rates. Right? So I could add that back in up here. So here I didn't write it down because it was kind of a long one, but it's basically this expression we derived there. Here we could put it in, right? R prime of t equals 5 fourteenths h prime of t. Right? That's our relationship between these two. All right, so then let's just solve this at this moment in time, right? So plug in what we know. At this point, we know that the rate of change of the height is minus 0 0.1386. So we'll plug that in. Right? So we get r prime of t equals 5 over 14 times minus 0 0.1386 feet per hour. So we plug this into a calculator, we find that this gives us minus 0 0.0495 feet per hour, right? And then that's our answer to part B, right? The rate of change of the radius at the top of the water level, uh, the rate of change of that radius is minus 0 0.0495 feet per hour, and it's feet per hour because radius should be measured in feet, so then the derivative with respect to time would be feet per hour, okay? So in this problem, let's review what we did. We started off with the kind of description of the problem. We try to identify relevant formulas and you know which variables were given, which variables we're supposed to solve for, right? So here we're given, if we read this problem carefully, you'll see that this two feet cubed per hour, right? This is our V prime of T, right? Technically with a minus sign because it's leaking. So that's kind of what we have to intuit this sign, right? Otherwise it's not really explicitly stated, right? But we know it's going out, so it should be negative, right? This is V prime of T. And we're given kind of the, the full dimensions of the tank. So I guess these ones would give us the relationship R over H equals five over 14. Right? And then the cone shape implies this volume equation. Right? So that's that's kind of where you identify the information that's given, right? They give you the cone shape tank, tells you what the volume equation is. This information here tells you the rate of change of volume. And then these dimensions actually give us the relationship between the radius and the height. Okay? And then we go to the questions. We see what they're asking for. How fast is the water level decreasing? That says we're asking for H prime. And this question, how fast is R changing? That tells us we're looking for R prime of T. And then this H equals six feet, that kind of tells us what moment in time we're looking for, right? So the volume, the radius, and the height are all changing as a function of time. So to identify a specific point in time, you have to give us you know, either the volume, the radius, or the height at a particular point in time. And then we can find the other two at that point in time. Okay, so then we built up this diagram where we wrote down the relevant variables. So the volume, the height, the radius, their derivatives. And we came up with a related, uh, a relationship between the variables. So here we said, okay, these two are related because of that similar triangle formula. And then we said, well, the volume is related to both the height and the radius. And then substituting in this relationship makes this just a volume as a function of h. Then we take the derivative with respect to time of these two relationships to, de to derive relationships between the relative rates of change of these two things, okay? So we derived this equation here, which relates v prime h prime. And we also derived a relationship between r prime and h prime, okay? And then we just plug in all the given information that we have to find the numerical values of the variables and rates of change that we're looking for. All right, so hopefully this example is, is, is helpful. Um, you know, and there's, there's a couple more on the web work and I think there's one on the checkpoint too. That you approach in a similar way to this one, okay?